Hello, investors, and welcome back. Let's talk about Hellbiz or ticker symbol HLBZ. What does this company do? Is it getting to a price point where you might want to take a look at it? We're going to take a look at the charts, go through the financials. We're going to go through the bull and the bear case on this one because it's pretty interesting, and I'll tell you why. This may be inflationary proof, potentially, if they can manage their cost of goods sold, their operating costs, which are out of control. So we're going to take a look at this one. I think it's really interesting. A huge, massive short position was taken out today, and it does have the elements of a potential short squeeze. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit that thumbs up button if you like this kind of detailed information about stocks. And then also check out the Weeble link in the comments below. This is only an offer that's good through today, June 8th, and then it expires tomorrow on June 9th. One penny deposit into a Weeble account, you get six free shares. And then what you do with those shares, once you get them, is up to you. It's free money. So if you don't have a Weeble account, be sure to check that out. So Hellbiz announces a purchase of shares by its chief executive officer and founder of Hellbiz. He purchased a little over $2 million shares of the Class A common stock. That is about 6% of the common stock. And he had a statement, I continue to be excited and hopeful for the future of the company and the impact that they can have on the world. This being an eco-friendly reopening play and a solution to mobile transportation when we see record prices for uh, gas right now. Now, cutting cost is something that they're focused on and they should be. We'll take a look at that. Streaming processes and looking at their key performance indicators or KPIs for the business. Now, he said that the purchase of today's stock was a personal commitment on him for the future of the company and their continued success. Your city one tap away for mobility, food, and streaming. Uh, is this company trying to do too much? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Revenue growth for 2021, only $9 million. They're expecting to double that this year. Now, you know you're only paying under a dollar for this, and it has a relatively small market cap. It has a revenue growth from last year to this year of 207 percent year-over-year growth. The trips, $9 million, and that's 152% growth year-over-year. Year. Their license, they've expanded this to 44, 76% growth year-over-year, year. and their fleet size has even grown for 10,000 vehicles, 186% year-over-year. Hellbiz Media operates as an advertising arm. The first thing that comes to mind here is when Snap had to adjust their guidance and what happened to their share price because some of their indicators were saying that some of these cost levers could be pulled by companies and those cost levers can impact marketing spend or advertising spend and that could impact this business. So I would say that you want to be aware of their important partnerships, which are a big positive. So I'm bullish there, but I'm bearish on the fact that advertising spend in a recessionary and inflationary environment could be a cost lever that's pulled along with people. We see people being let go or hiring freezes happening and advertising spend could also be a lever that's pulled. It's very easy for companies to pull that so that way they can control costs. I do like that the company has a one subscription to unlock your city unlimited. You get for $39.99 per month, you get to unlock all of these elements to the platform. So you get an unlimited free rides, you get all of the vehicles, free food deliveries and unlimited video sharing. Licensing is important and this company has increased that by 76% year over year. You can see 32 license here in Italy and 12 in North America. So that's gonna be Americas, Canada, and Alaska. This company is also getting data points such as price, average range. When someone takes one of these vehicles, either the e-scooter, e-bike, or e-moped, or Hellbiz One, when they take these vehicles out, they get and collect those data points, gender and age, so they're able to make marketing and they're able to make investment decisions based on that data. So the food delivery aspect of this business, orders are delivered by these ghost kitchens, and then Hellbiz kitchen butlers and local delivery partners are able to use these vehicles to deliver that food. So we've got the full year P&L group and then we're going to take a look at this in quarterly buckets from 2018 to 2020. You can see the revenue stream has increased but so have the operational losses and they have been 
pretty significant. So are they at an inflection point where you'll see these losses start to become tame? And has this share price really gotten low enough for this to actually be an investment that you should consider? So let's take a look at the 10Q. I wanted to take a look at revenue recognition, show you the pots that make up the total revenue. And there's three. One's not very big, so it's only 79. So you could really say there's only two pots of money that make up the total revenue stream, and that's mobility revenues, which is 1577, and media revenues, which is 1656. Now, pay per ride is the majority of this revenue stream. So you can see it doesn't look like people are really taking advantage of the mobility subscription. So that's one thing that I wanted to point out. Now, of course, this is only the three months ending in March 31st. But I will say that month over month, you should see this subscription number carry over and it shouldn't be drastically different in other quarters. If anything, it should be growing. So we should see a much smaller number, which you see 164. And then you see your media revenues, which have really grown from 2021 to 2022. So if this continues on a pace, that would be a good thing. And also, we want to see those subscription numbers increase. Now, pay per ride is also increased, so maybe those marketing dollars are paying off. All right, let's take a quick look at the charge. September 21st of 2021, this was upwards of $41. Now, we know that the market is repricing everything, but this has been on an absolute downtrend before the CEO himself tapped out and said, look, this is so low that I'm going to buy some myself. And this went to a 52-week low of 90 cents, and it looks like it's trying to revisit that. And I believe that the massive short position that was taken out today, and we'll take a look at that also, is maybe going to cause, and also the CPI and the FOMC meeting next week could cause this to go a little bit lower. But I think it's still absolutely interesting. Now, the volume was upwards of 44 million yesterday and it held up a very high number of almost 5 million today. We'll see where that closes. But on Monday, when the announcement that the CEO was uh, buying back or buying shares of over 2 million, 6%, you can see as far as volume, how this has moved. Now, analysts, I don't think that you can trust the numbers that are here for analysts. There's not many people covering this and you can see all of this information is outdated, but the last time they looked at this, they did say that this year's revenue could be 56 million, and the company did say that they are on track to double the revenue from last year. Now, if we look at the price per sales trailing 12 months, we've got a two, and this is historically low for the company. Okay, this is crazy. 21 million total short volume reported. I just want you to see that, and I wanna scroll down here to show you that there is not a number that's even close to 300,000. So for this to jump up to 21 million, that's absolutely massive as of today. And the fee, the borrow fee is just getting higher, 87.1% available shares to short 20,000 reported as of this morning, that is crazy. All right, let's do a quick summary. To finish this video off, this is everything that I covered. There's a few things that I didn't cover, so I'm just gonna hit those. Be sure to pause the screen and read it completely if you wanna capture it all. Now, we watch the CEO purchase shares, which is a signal that he may think that there is something coming up, which could be the merger and acquisition announcement that could give this stock a boost. And also, he believes in the growth for this company at this price. Now we also know that there was a massive short position taken out on this and they are burning cash. They actually doubled their operating expenses and they're spending on media, talent management, marketing spend, going public and growth plans. So actively seeking capital raises, negative income on the cash flow statement. Are they trying, are they trying to do too much with the ride mobility business live sports and food delivery, is it too much there? They had a very short Q1 22 earnings call uh, of 18 minutes and about three minutes of that was just admin stuff. So profitability concern and does this dollar figure work? Is $40 too much for another monthly thing that's coming out of people's checks when they're looking to tighten with recession concerns? Now there's a lot of things in the bull case of course, that merger and acquisition could be good for long-term growth. And are we actually changing our buying habits and our transportation habits when it comes to mobile trends? I mean, micro 
transportation trends may be something that picks up with rising gas prices. So three-year streaming deal with Amazon, Italian sports deal, soccer isn't going anywhere. People are going to be wanting to watch European football. Baseball is being added. I don't know how the platform is going to do in North America, but quarter over quarter, year over year, this does look like the year to be invested in this at the right price. So I would say if they can get their operational costs under control, which it looks like by the CEO purchasing these shares, he's trying to make a statement and get this back on everybody's watch list. And he's definitely got it on mine. So 44 license. I think that this is possibly something you want to continue to watch. Obviously be greedy with your money. There might be some buying opportunities coming up in the next few days. And especially going into the FOMC meeting, you never know when things can change. But I do believe that we're going to have another quarter of trying to reset and find out exactly where stocks are valued at. And this could be very close to the bottom for this stock. That's all I got. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Leave the video a big thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.